So the first thing we want to do is flip the console over to the back and we want to take a look at all the ports that are there. And the first port we want to identify is the HDMI port. And you want to take the including cable that comes with the console and plug that into there because that's what's going to plug into your TV and it's going to give you audio and visual from the console onto the TV. The next port that's there is the power port that you want to plug in the power cable. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And now there's some other optional ports here. You do have a network port, which is pretty cool. If you're close enough to your router, you can plug it in for faster speeds, especially if the download updates and large games. But this does come with built-in wireless, so we're going to use that option here instead. And there's also a bunch of USB ports, and there is a storage expansion cost slot as well too, which we'll get into that a little bit later what those can do for you. Now let's move everything over to the TV, get everything connected, and you can stand your Series S up like this with the power button at the top, or you can lay it flat down with the black spot at the top for ventilation as well too. But either way, go ahead and hit the power button to get things powered up. Go over to controller, install the batteries inside of there, hit the sync button at the top of the controller, and also hit the sync button on the console as well too on the front next to the USB port. You'll be all connected up, ready to go with the setup as you see right here. Now it's going to ask if you want to set up with your phone. We're going to go ahead and skip that for now. Go ahead and hit the three lines right there for the menu. Go ahead and hit that. And from here, you just want to choose which uh, language you want. We're going to go ahead and choose English here for me. And then what variety of English do you want to choose? United States. And then from here, it's going to ask you what Wi-Fi connection you want to set up here. So wait for it to scan your Wi-Fi and then pick the one you, you need to connect to. Okay, once the Wi-Fi is connected, it's gonna ask where do you live? We're gonna hit United States. And then from here, it's probably gonna ask us to make a Microsoft account. If you don't have one already, you're going to need to make one here. So go ahead and get that done. You'd be able to actually make one right here on the console if you need to. You can use any email address you need to to make it a Microsoft account to be able to use that on here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my account because I already have one here. Let's go ahead and get that signed in. Next here, to kind of explain the data sharing sort of stuff that it does with it here. You can see the legal stuff and you hit no thanks if you don't wanna share your stuff. Yes, I'm in, whichever one you wanna do there is up to you. Uh, and then it's going to say it shares data with publishers. Go ahead next. This is important information to know in terms of how your data is being managed. So just kind of look at it so you have a good understanding. And if you have a previous Xbox, it's going to ask if it wants to apply settings from the previous one. We're going to hit no thanks. I want to start this off fresh. And these are your sign in security options coming up here next. No barriers. Anybody can see your data by, do whatever they want to do. You can ask for a pass key to do any changes to settings. You can lock it down real tightly if you want to as well, too, whichever option you want to choose. And then you can have how you want to sign in. You can use Insta sign in, which basically allows it to sign in immediately as soon as the console's turned on. It could be linked to a particular controller if you want to. We'll use Insta sign in for now. All right, choose our time zone. Now there's two more options to choose here from energy saver and standby mode. Energy saver will basically put in a low power state if you need to save power. Standby mode is pretty cool to have turned on if you want to be able to connect to your console through the Xbox app if you choose to do that. So I'm in this standby mode for right now. And do you want to keep your games and apps updated uh, automatically? We'll kind of obviously do it for you. Hit next. Now it's going to try to find the best TV um, settings for the display here. And once it finds the best TV settings for you, you'll get to the screen right here. So let's go. Take me home. Um, you can actually set up this to work with uh, Google Assistant if you want to. We'll skip that for right now. This asks you if you want to get for Xbox Game Pass, see the games. We can actually jump right into that as well too. But we want to go ahead and hit home right here. Now once you're home here, you can see that you have the home screen and all the apps and a pretty intuitive interface to kind of go through. You go through our settings right here. We can check some of the uh, different things about the system. We can kind of check our storage and things like that. You can see here, you get about 361 gigabytes of storage available on the Xbox out of the 512 that it comes with which isn't a whole lot but this video right here where I explain a little bit more about those storage cards and USB storage and sort of how they work I'll definitely check that out.